hello good afternoon uh, it's nisha on this side i'm going to talk about a powerful and versatile tool in the java ecosystem uh, java management extension uh, whether you are a seasoned java developer or someone just getting started with enterprise application and this can effectively uh, enhance your ability to monitor and manage uh, your java applications effectively so these are the topics I'm going to talk about. Uh, introduction to JMX, JMX architecture, MBeams, JMX agents, benefits of JMX, and uses of JMX. So let's get started with introduction to JMX. Uh, JMX is a Java technology that provides a standard way to manage and monitor resources, such as applications, devices, and service-driven networks. It allows developers to build management uh, interfaces for Java um, applications, offering a comprehensive framework for managing and monitoring Java applications at runtime. It also provides an easily configurable, uh, scalable, reliable, and more or uh, less friendly infrastructure for managing Java applications either locally or remotely. Let's get started with Java uh, JMX uh, architecture. Uh, JMX architecture is like a blueprint for uh, of high uh, tech control room. It designed to monitor and manage applications, Java applications. It's a well structured modular system that consists of several key components uh, like instrumentation, JMX agent, and remote management. This uh, instrument instrumentation layer uh, it uh, consists of resources such as applications, uh, devices, and services are instrumented using a Java object called mBeans or managed beans. And there's an agent here uh, uh, that's called a uh, JMX agent layer. It is the main component of uh, JMX architecture. Uh, JMX agents uh, directly control resources and make them available to remote management clients and management clients uh, this uh, are the protocol and adap uh, adapters um, make a JMX agent more accessible from remote management application outside the Java uh, virtual machine Let's uh, understand what are managed beans or M beans. Uh, these are the Java objects similar to Java bean components that follows a design pattern outlined in JMX specification. An M bean can represent a, a device, a application, or any resource that needs to be managed. So there are uh, several types of M beans. Let's get started with the first one, standard M bean. Standard M bean is it, it is the uh, simple. Uh, it is uh, this use a simple Java bean style naming convention and statically defined management interface. This is uh, most common type. Second, we have dynamic MBean. This must implement a uh, dynamic interface. They are exposed their uh, management interface at runtime when the components are initiated for the greatest flexibility. Then we have model MBeans. Uh, this model MBeans are also extension of dynamic MBeans. Uh, model MBeans must implement the model MBean interface. Model MBeans simplify the instrumentation of resources by providing default behavior. Then we have Open MBean. <clears throat> Open MBean rely on basic self-describing user-friendly data types for universal manageability. For the last, we have MX beans. Uh, this is a type of M bean that reference only a predefined set of data types. In this way, you can be sure that your M bean uh, will be usable by any client, uh, including the remote clients as well. So then we have a JMX agent. Uh, JMX agent is a component that manages M bean and provides access to them. It consists of basically three main parts. Also, it handles the MBean. So first, uh, the three parts are firstly MBean server. This is the core of uh, JMX uh, agent. 
when all mbins are registered uh, an mbin server is a repository uh, of mbin that provides management application access to mbins application does not have uh, mbin directly does not access mbin directly but instead uh, access them through the mbin server via unique object name then we have a protocol adapter or connector. Uh, this components provide remote access uh, to MBIN using various protocols. Then we have monitoring and note. This part of JMX agent handles the monitoring of MBIN attributes and generation of notification alert based on certain condition. For example, if uh, there is anything breaking out, then it will uh, have that notification features as well. Then we have benefits of using JMX. Uh, the first, the very first benefit is seamless monitoring. It allows you to monitor your application in real time, providing immediate insights or into performance and health. Uh, then we have dynamic adjustments. With JMX, you can uh, make on-the-fly adjustment without uh, restarting your application, ensuring uh, continuous uh, uptime and responsiveness. Then we have scalability. The modular nature of JMX architecture means it can scale your application, handling increased load uh, and complexity with ease. Then it have a integration capabilities. Uh, it can integrate smoothly with your existing enterprise systems, providing an unified management framework that simplifies administration and monitoring. Now let's have a look on uses of JMX. Firstly, we uh, it is an optimizing performance. Uh, developers use JMX to track resource usage and identify performance bottleneck, uh, fine uh, tuning applications for optimal uh, efficiency. Health checks and alerts. Uh, JMX is used to set up a health check and alerting system, ensuring any issues are uh, detected and addressed before they impact any end users. Like I said before, uh, then we have a configuration management um, system. A system administrator use JMX to manage application configurations dynamically. New requirement without having a downtown a downtime. Then we have a comprehensive uh, auditing. JMX integration with logging system allows for detailed auditing, helping maintain security and compliance standard. So yeah, that's all from my side.